Did you ever want to know why Angry Birds is so addictive? Well, so did the neuroscientists. And now the University of Helsinki is trying to bring Finnish gaming developers and these scientists together by hosting meetings for the Hels Helsinki Business Club. Well, Anna Leach has been writing all about this. Anna, what is the link between neuroscience and gaming? Well, um, the Helsinki Business Hub is trying to look at how collaboration between the two can be fruitful for both uh, the scientists and the gaming developers. Uh, both are quite strong, gaming industry is strong in Helsinki and there's a strong neuroscience centre at the University of Helsinki. Okay, but how, how can one help the other? I guess that's, that's a question most people are asking. Sure, um, it's not an obvious one, but for gaming developers there's a short term uh, benefit that uh, neuroscience measurements allow for greater games testing, so you can measure concentration on someone playing a game, which allows designers to see when concentration's dipping, where they need to tighten uh, up so the that's interaction. Why, that's, that's when you find out how addictive Angry Birds is. Sure, that's right, that's <laughs> the short term, what colours yeah. work well, what music works well. Um, in the longer what term... What the brain responds to, Yeah, exactly, it's very d detailed yeah. data. Um, in the longer term, you know, we, you can, we're thinking about games that you control with your mind, so things where you can, like, move things on the screen by just thinking about them via headsets. Uh, and for neuroscientists, um, you get a lot of data about how humans concentrate and in the longer term potentially treatments for mental health conditions that um, would use games rather than, say, drugs to control the mental state of patients. But isn't the hardware, a lot of this hardware, I mean, incredibly expensive? I mean. Um, no, well, the tech isn't that new. It's been used in um, medical imaging for the past few decades. What is new is that it is cheap enough to uh, put to these commercial uses. Um, so these headsets, um, they're not, you know, they're not perfect. They're still a bit kind of, there's problems. But I mean, they've got to a level where they can be used. They're about the same cost as a Wii, for example. And they can be used for games and for software. Okay. So is there any benefits to this thing they're calling what neuro gaming or whatever? Benefits, well, um, better games, um, arguably better health, mental health treatments, though that's fair distance down the line and um, better education. I guess they're not making any promises, uh, medical promises at this stage. No, yeah. it's all kind of therapeutic and kind of soft, soft promises. Um, and I mean, we're talking about the kind of 10 years, 15 year outlook here. But I mean, there's possibilities like um, mixed with Google glasses. You'll be able to like, walk down the street and see what the mental state of the people around you on the pavement are by putting a visual I'm not letter. sure I would <laughs> like that particularly. <laughs> well, but it's, but it's it is interesting, okay, mm. so and this basically would put the Finns right ahead of, uh, at, at the forefront of a fairly fairly key industry. Yeah, the well they seem to be angling to secure some government funding to allow the kind of strong gaming industry they have in Helsinki to uh, explore these avenues. And yeah, I mean, VCs aren't particularly investing in it now because it's such a, it's, That's it's venture a down capitalist. the line. Yeah, yeah venture yeah. capitalists, is a down the line tech. But yeah, the Finns are seeming a strong position. Anna, thank you.